Hello YouTube, Asuma here with another Minecraft tutorial. I'm going to be showing you how to install multiple copies of Minecraft onto your computer. We'll take a look at how I use this to organize my gameplay and we'll talk about the advantages and disadvantages of this method. On my desktop I have a hotbar full of shortcuts to each of the Minecrafts that I have installed on my computer. I use a different icon to represent each of the Minecrafts and what they're for. I have one for my Spellbound Caves super hostile map. Asuma's World, Classic 1.7.3 maps, My Event Server, Regular Minecraft, Weekly Snapshots, and the Voxel Box mod pack. The most common use for this is to separate different versions of Minecraft and mods. As well as this, you can use it to separate statistical data as I have done in Asuma's World and my Super Hostile map. To set this up you will need a copy of Minecraft and a basic understanding of how to use Windows. First of all you will need to create a folder for all the data to go into. I've used the example d colon slash Minecraft. In that folder you need to create another one called Shortcuts. And in that folder you need to place Minecraft.exe. Now you will need to open Notepad and write these two lines into the blank document. Where I've written Vanilla Minecraft, that simply represents the name of the different install you want to have. For example, you could have one called My Favourite Mod or 1.7.3. Next, you need to go File, Save As and navigate to the folder I mentioned earlier where we put our Minecraft.exe. Then you need to go to File Name and type Vanilla Minecraft.bat. This could be, as I said before, My Favourite Mod.bat or 1.7.3.bat and this file will be the shortcut that you need to link to on your desktop or wherever you plan to put your shortcut and last of all you need to go save type as all files star dot star and this will allow you to save the file as a dot bat instead of a dot text there are some disadvantages to using this setup you'll have to copy your texture packs from each installation to the other your save game will only be accessible from the Minecraft it was created with. Your statistical data will become separated to each of the different Minecraft installs. There is also no interface or automation and this means that you have to set up each of the files using Notepad and place the shortcuts all by yourself. The advantages of using this setup mean you can have different installations for different activities. For example mods, pre-releases, classic minecrafts i.e. alpha and separating statistical data from each of the installs as well as this you have the flexibility of determining where the installation will be you will be able to make minecraft portable however you will need to make sure the drive letter is always the same there are no programs to do this putting you in total control and there are no limitations to how many copies you want to make or where you want to place it you will also be able to run multiple copies of Minecraft at the same time however I cannot tell you if this is stable or not but it works for me. So that concludes the tutorial part of the video. If you have any questions or need any help you can reach me by private message or comment and I'll be sure to get back to you and help you out. So the rest of this video is just me discussing a few other things that you can do with this setup. So you may have noticed that some of those disadvantages and advantages were basically the same thing. It's like a double-edged sword. Sometimes it will work in your favour or not. And for me this whole setup works really great. It means I can uh, separate the statistical data from my LP in Super Hostile. And uh, I've done it before on my LP. I've asked people a few questions. You know, how long do you think I was playing the game for? And at the end of my Super Hostile series I'll probably summarize how many times it got killed you know using the statistical data and it's not uh, distorted by the other installations that I have and uh, yeah I find this really good if I want to test out a mod pack I just simply create a new installation and um, if you're doing mods you basically when you've when you've set that app data folder in your shortcut um, you go into that folder and you'll see dot minecraft and in there is all the regular minecraft files and that's how you know you can test out a mod um, yeah and it's it's a lot safer this way um, some of the disadvantages that I talked about the save data and the um, texture pack to me isn't 
really too much of an issue. I don't use a texture pack, but if you did, I can imagine it would be a little irritating uh, each time it gets updated to copy it to each of your installs. Um, yeah, and uh, the other thing I said at the end of the video there was um, there's a few extra things you can do with this. Now, to those of you like me who watch DocM, you might be aware that this um, method of using the setup data, uh, Minecraft EXE and Notepads, um, you can use it to actually give Minecraft.exe different properties when it runs, and some of this includes different memory settings. Uh, so, I mean, if if you know about that, go look out for it. I can't really tell you too much about it because I don't do it myself. But um, apparently it can improve performance issues and things like that. So you can actually customize it at that level as well, tell it how much memory to use. And uh, you might also be wondering about the app data. Someone asked me this before. So basically when it, when it sets app data, it's not going to change it for your entire computer. It's just the instance that you run this Minecraft within and that doesn't mean while it's running everything else will use that folder it just means for the Minecraft.exe exclusively and when you run two at once when it loads the next Minecraft up it will do it exclusively for that folder as well so this won't interfere with any of your app data settings or anything like that and uh, if you're wondering about the little icons that I use, I simply got them from the Minecraft wiki. Um, if you save the file and use that as an icon, the edges will already be transparent and that was just something I wanted to do. I felt like um, each each little icon sort of represented what it meant, like you know, using Obsidian for Super Hostile because of how difficult it is, and Diamonds for LP, you know, LP being um, something I really enjoy doing. And, I, you know, I think I've covered everything. Um, if you need help, like I said, you can get in touch with me um, and I'll be happy to try and help you. So um, that's about it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this little bit with me rambling. <laughs> okay, um, yeah, so thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.